Hi, this is Eve Starr with Eve Starr Fiber Arts. It is uh, Tuesday, January 9th, 2018, and I'm bringing you just a little mini uh, update on some things going on. My cameraman's not here, so I can't use two hands for you. Uh, this here is uh, after parts one and two of the Crochet Along Elements, and it is by a designer uh, that goes by Hooks and Yarn for her little design business. And the video that I'm following is Esther Dykstra on It's All in a Nutshell. And if you follow her row by row, she gives you the repeats. Usually she'll help you through like a corner and a couple of repeats. And then you take it from there and then she'll meet up with you, which is great because it's not, you know, long, tedious videos. And this is really interesting because it has so much surface texture because these are called post stitches. It's kind of how you do cables in crochet. And here we've reached down and we've connected them through different rows and you get that wonderful blending. This is not the colorway that was suggested. I've made it a challenge for myself to use up um, everything I've got in stock, a partial balls of things, my hand spun, hand dyed. And so uh, that's my challenge. Plus I want it to look like my view outside the window. You might know I live in the Ozarks, and I have these beautiful cliffs where the golden sunlight hits them in the late afternoon. And this is my soil, which is a very reddish brown because it's like a terracotta because it has so much iron in it. And then up here, we've got the beautiful sky colors, which are warmer blue, and these are my river colors. The white river mist coming up is so incredible. So that's where we are after part two. I'm kind of behind on that. I couldn't start it because I had so much going on with clients in the shop. So I'm finally kind of jumping in there. Now that behind it is uh, the after picture of my uh, Japanese Sayori. Don't want to just snag on my T-pins back here that I used. Oh, by the way, before I leave this, I lightly blocked it by uh, spraying it with a little spray, spray bottle last night that had a few essential oils in it because I think that just smells yummy. And once I got it damp, it didn't have to be soaking wet. Uh, because of the, the nature of these stitches here, you're straightening and pulling and you're changing where the square goes. And so the corners are moving. And because of that, it's going to pull in or pull out. And if you want a nice even square to proceed with and move on with your crochet in the, in the following uh, motifs that are going to be spun around this one, then it really helps to block it. These are T-pins and these are foam kind of like puzzle pieces you use for the floor. I'm going to show you from the side. These are 5 eighths of an inch thick. They're much thicker than what you can get from like uh, some of the shops online that were, where they market it just for knitters. I suggest you do what I did. I found these online with a company called Softile, S-O-F-T-I-L-E. And uh, these squares were just over a dollar a piece. So if you just bite the shipping, it's about 8 to $10, of course, because they're bulky. And I got enough to uh, block a really big shawl, and I'm, I'm loving them. And because they're thicker, it, they don't buckle under the strain of when you do like a lace and you're pulling it pretty tight. So this I did not pull tight because I didn't want to lose the texture. If I stretched it way out, this some of this would go flat. And it's already dry, I'm going to take these pins out. But... Um, just go ahead and, and block. I, I see people all the time. In fact, just today on Facebook, I saw some people who don't like blocking. They think it's overwhelming. It's so easy. And if you've bought any of my scarves, this is a, a great little tip on how you do it. You know, just reshape it with your fingers once you get it damp. And then the pins just hold it. It's not like you're stretching it way out because one of the beauty of things made um, that are knitted or crocheted or even woven is that you've got some bounce there from the fibers. And especially since I spin woolen most of the time, my fibers have a lot of bounce and loft to them. And you don't want to lose that. And you don't want to lose texture like this. What you want is to straighten out things like this. This was buckling and it was all curly and, and the, the straight edges were kind of in and out and undulating. So it gives you some control over your corners. You see I put a little pin there, but I didn't yank it. I just placed it where it needed to be and then stuck a pin there. So that's just a good little little quick tip on, on blocking, and please do it. It's worth it. It's easy. And like I said, if you, bu if you buy a scarf from me or whatever, and you've washed it, 
this will give you the control to reshape it the way you want it. Um, if you wanted it stretched out more than I did originally, you can do that. If you want to smush it in a little bit more so it's cushier, you can do that. So blocking gives you the control and you go from hand or homemade to like artisanal handmade, handcrafted. And this is the uh, Ammonite hook case by Dedry Ice of Look at What I Made. And the video is also by Esther Dykstra on It's All in a Nutshell. And uh, the first one I made turned out really, really big and floppy. I've shared this before in another video. This is alpaca. And it's gorgeous, but like, it just flops all over. It, I put my big, big hooks into that, though. I've got some ginormous hooks, so I put those in there. But this one, I made quite a bit smaller for my normal size crochet hooks. And these are the ergonomic hooks with the thicker handles. I made the pockets so they would fit. So let me just give you a quick peek if you didn't see my other video on that. I won't take long, so if you want to see it, just, just look at the other one. But these are acrylic beads, real high quality. Look at that. You wouldn't think that was acrylic, those shiny silver ones, but they are. I found them on eBay. Got them from Asia, slow boat, but it was worth it. Very inexpensive, and I've washed them in hot water and soap and everything just to see how they would do, and they hold up terrifically well. So that's my, my little one. My modifications are on the other video. Uh, basically, I exchanged or, or I changed out and did uh, half double crochets, which are short and squat and dense, so that it wouldn't show through. This I showed you the other day as well, getting stuck in my T pins too. This is um, my Japanese Sayori. This is my second one I've made like this. The first one was for a client. This one will probably go in the shop as well. And I finished with that broom sticking technique. If any of you've had a broomstick skirt back in the day, it was similar, but Rather than just twisting it, I started by gathering it up in my hand like this and tying it. And uh, just look at a previous video, maybe right before this one, check the dates. And of course, I'll put a link in the box when I can, when I'm in town with the 4G. And uh, it's all completely dry. And I, I dried it in a way that I wouldn't recommend because I don't want anybody to burn their house down. But um, I turned on the oven and turned it right off again on the lowest setting. And I had it in there, uh, so it would just be nice and dry, and it, it turned out really well. The next thing I'm going to do is work on the fringe, and I'll comb it out, and I'll use a rotary color cutter to even it up, and then I'm going to show you in another video how to make twisted fringe. I've got a fringe twister. You can do it with or without, but I think it's a lot easier with. It's an inexpensive little mechanical device. Okay, so that's that. We are inside my room today because it's just too chilly to be elsewhere. This is a hood that's almost done. Now over here is what we're working on today. I just made this part of the hat. No pattern, of course, because, you know, it's a circle. And there are lots and lots of tutorials on how to do that. If you want me to show you how I did this one, I will do one. But there are lots. This is pure French Angora, and it is so soft and silky you wouldn't believe it. Not to be confused with mohair, which is usually not as soft, but this was given me by a dear friend. And uh, this is for her grandchildren's cousin, sweet little Elena. And around the face, I did uh, cotton, just in case. I mean, this is extremely soft, but hardly anybody has a problem with cotton. And this is just a front post, back post, uh, double crochet. Uh, this was a, a plain double up here, and then up here I started there. I used a bigger hook than I normally would because I didn't want it to be too dense and hot. So I wanted about 19 inches, and these uh, heads from Asia tend to be smaller than a grown woman's head. So I think we're right on track there. So this is my blending board here on the bed today. Just because, it's that kind of day. And this is bunny fur that I dyed. I used different rose colored, uh, I actually used Wilton's gel that you use for cake decorating. Anything can be turned into an acid dye. If you've got a good pigment, the acid is the vinegar, and that's the mordant that opens up the natural protein fibers like uh, wool, angora like this, alpaca, silk. They all respond to the acid, and that opens it up and causes a chemical reaction with heat, and that's why you put it in the oven. And I've got another video on that, so check that out if you want to do some oven dyeing with uh, acid, acid dyes. This, the reason that you use a blending board uh, to make Rolags is you can make a whole bunch. This is a large blending board by Fancy Kitty. And 
these are a few of the roll eggs I've already made. And I'm sorry, my cameraman's not here because I can't do it with two hands for you today. But uh, as you can see, it's not solid pink because I don't, I don't roll that way. I like for things to be a little bit, uh, not crude, but you know, definitely artisanal. And so what you do is uh, these pins here are like what you would have on hand cards. They're at an angle. And you just load it up with the longer fibers first. I've got some solid merino there. And then I put the soft little short bunny fibers over that. And then you take this very soft brush and you just gently push it into the pins. Some people I see go rip, rip, rip with things and it's like, no, don't do that. You'll damage the fibers. Damage equals itch. And I'm the fussiest person around when it comes to itch. So you see the bottom here, how it's starting to lift up because it's getting full. I will take, and I promise you'll have a full video on this later, but you take two dowels like this. The, these came with it, so they're nice and finished out. And then you start rolling it up. You, you pull on it a little bit. You draft it a little bit. You roll it between the two dowels. And then I would go about this far. I would get about five or six uh, roll eggs off of this one because I filled it pretty full. And then you, you pull it and you, you just uh, take your fingers and kind of tighten it down. Like I said, I promise we're going to have a full full blown one on that. And then this is a pillowcase that I use on my lap because I wear black a lot. And when you're uh, spinning or crocheting or knitting, it's hard to see anything if it's against black unless it's, you know, white. So this I put on my lap is kind of a spinning uh, visual aid because that'll be a light color behind my work, just like I do with, with crochet. And I just wanted to point out this bowl real quick. This is by the amazing Bob Heckathorn of Heckathorn Turned Wood. He made this, and it is just a glorious thing. I just love it. I've got it for anniversary presents. Uh, requested my husband get him for me last couple years, and I'm definitely going to request one this year for my 15th anniversary. Isn't that beautiful? I think that he called that county wood, K-A-U-N-I, like a Hawaiian name almost. And he puts layer after layer of food grade wax on his bowls. And that little star shape, of course, is for your yarn to come through. So you can use it as a yarn bowl. And he makes real deep yarn bowls too. But anyway, just a little shout out. I just think that's gorgeous. So that's for the inside of the ear. I'm going to use solid white for the outside of the ear. And I'll show you that. She wanted a, a lop-eared bunny hat. And then I'm going to embroider a little face on there. She wants a face up above. Like a little nose and eyes. So we'll do that. So anyway, she's been waiting a little while. So I'm going to finish that up since it's too chilly to go outside today. And this is my needle felted uh, color study that I did for one of my tapestry weavings. Here's my rocks. I loved how the rocks turned out. And it was funny because this was just sort of a throwaway project that I did just to test my different fibers. This is a commercially, this is a commercial piece of felt. You know, you buy it in the store. It's a, it's a nice wool felt. Uh, but I just took all the fibers I wanted to spin and use for my tapestry. And I just took the fibers before I spun them. And I just needle felted them in. There's a little bit of sparkle in the clouds, if you can see that. And I needle felted the sun in, and then I embroidered the rays. So we've got multimedia going on here. And then we've got uh, art yarn that I just needle felted in for my river. And these are my bluffs across the river. So I loved how that turned out so much that I saved it. I'm going to frame it or something. And then here is um, what came out of that color study. I tried using my rigid heddle loom sideways, or weaving sideways on it rather than, you know, the other way and have, having a, a limited amount of space to use. And I've got mixed feelings about how that turned out. I love that this is all hand-dyed, hand-spun art yarn. I mean, that that's great. Not the warp, of course. That's just a cotton, a denim cotton warp. But the weft is all me. And I'm really happy with how this turned out. But it was challenging working sideways. And it did distort, you know, the shape of my work a little bit. I mean, if you back up, you can definitely tell it's my view. And I'm, I'm going to put, a, you know, some more mixed media in there. I did that for the bluffs. I just felted down with a felting needle. Um, some 
lines going the other way from my sandstone dolomite bluffs across the river. And I'm still going to add the lights for my porch. This is my house. But, uh, yeah, I, I would not recommend doing it sideways if you could help it. it there were some benefits because I was able to d use the, the heddle and open and close the shed rather than weaving in and out every time. So, you know, there was an advantage to that. I just did, did like a triple clasped weft. I had, like if I was working on this row, I had a shuttle with the blue, with, the, with this kind of purple, with the bumpy um, art yarn purple, with the green. And so that would be one, two, three, four shuttles working that way. And every time you met and you got to the point where you wanted to switch them, you would twist them around each other. That's the clasped part of the clasped, sorry, clasped weft. And that's what links them together so you don't get a hole. But uh, it was kind of challenging working sideways, even though I had my little cheat sheet over here. So I'm going to get uh, a smaller loom for scarves and things and use the bigger one uh, more for tapestries because I wasn't trying to hurry because it does slow down using it. And this is a hood I just made and it took my poncho that's almost done. So anyway, I'll wrap this up before it gets any longer. Uh, I promise a real tutorial on Rolex, I promise, where you can see both my hands at once. And you've got a spinning uh, tutorial coming up where we'll be at the spinning wheel with these Rolex or other Rolex, probably be the gold ones I made, the ochre. And I'll show you some of the ways that I spin. And I spin with, you know, arthritis and MS and stuff. And just some tricks that I've kind of developed that help me to spin for quite a while without hurting myself. So, from my teeny tiny bedroom studio today, this is Eve Star with Eve Star Fiber Arts. And uh, we'll see you soon with, with more tips.